I can flow into vulnerabilities for Charlie. Does that make sense to go into this? Uh, yes, absolutely. You could go ahead with vulnerabilities. We can cover those three types like application vulnerabilities, network vulnerabilities, and plain vulnerabilities. So all three menus you could cover in the vulnerabilities section. Perfect. So we're working our way across the toolbar. So vulnerabilities. So what we've done here is we've broken this up into three options. First being vulnerabilities, meaning everything, all vulnerabilities, which includes application and network. So these are both types of balls all up in one screen, broken out with your problem groups. So when I'm looking, this list will include application and network. So for example, these are obviously all application balls. I can tell by the names. I see Adobe, Adobe, WinRAR. Looking in my problem groups, if I get down to things like SMB, well, I know these aren't going to be applications. These are going to be network, right? So network side, same with SSL cards. Those are not going to be applications. They're network side. Same with database, SQL injection. Call back and just take it down to the... Guys, can we get someone to mute whoever's uh I think we got somebody that's getting some background noise. Uh, See if I can find no. them. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like it's Eric Campbell. All right, Eric, I muted you, sir, if you hear me or not. Um, okay, so vulnerabilities again. We're looking at everything in one screen, right? All vulnerabilities, network and application in the same list. As we demonstrated earlier. We are at the demo company. You can always switch back up to global and it just loads in that little center list for you and you get the breakout again, okay? Then you've got application vols. So if you wanna just look at application level vulnerabilities, this will give you your listing of just the application side. We're gonna not look at anything on the network, but just what's installed on the machines and break it down, software name, what the version, OS, total count of alls, and then the breakout by severity. As always, you can drill down if you want to see, hey, what are those three assets? You drill down to the three. We'll give you the names. You can drill down to the agent details by IP address if you wanted to get down to that machine. And this is that particular machine here. Yeah, I'll just close out, take us back. Same thing, close out, take us back. So application vulnerabilities globally. All my customers, I got 805 of them in the screen, or I can get down to one of my companies and see just one customer. Printing options, like always, download, export, that'll pop out deals Excel files. If you need to provide that list to somebody or if you wanted to do something with it, it's there. So we're back up on balls, moving into the network scan findings, which is really network vulnerabilities. Same thing, 58 in the screen. We generally are just going to load five. I'll load 25 here. This will break out what the software or CVE is, versions, what OSs are being affected, same type of data on the network side, customer, or global. Switching between global just basically adds in the company count for you. That's the toggle. Global company adds companies or not. Very simple. But nice, as you guys can see, you don't have to reload screens, right? In the previous version, the ones you guys have been using in V3, you had to literally go up to the toolbar, click on the global menu, and then go to the left and click on the menu again. Now we literally are just, hey, just use your toggle and switch it. So shout out to Shiva's team. I think this is going to be incredible as everyone starts to get used to this. I'm finding it much more fast to navigate in the application this way too. So I think it's working really nice. So again, that's going to be our vulnerability section. All right, Ryan, I think we could move next to the compliance as well. So I think yeah. you've already covered that compliance can, can be set from the, whichever compliance they would like to select, they can set it from the setting, but I think we could just, uh, as a refresh, we could uh, cover that again in this section. Absolutely. So compliance has two sections here, standards and the check master. So standards is going to be what you're normally calling our summary in the current product. So if you were in 
our current product looking at compliance summary, it's that dashboard. And so this dashboard now has been kind of remastered to organize the data a little cleaner, I'll say a lot cleaner than the previous version. The previous version, we just dumped out a set of controls and said, hey, if you want your CIS controls, there's 310 of them and here they are. And we just dump them on the screen and tell you if things are good or bad. Now, some of that is very useful, right? I've seen partners use that data and turn it into very useful scopes of work or help with you know reporting. Um, it, the data is good, right? But I think now we've kind of remastered it and brought it into a, a space where you can comprehend it a little more, at least for those that aren't control experts and compliance experts. Because again, some of our partners are just getting into this and this, I think this just helps everybody. So what we've done is when you come to the, the standard, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna default to one of the standards here. You can, as always, you can pick any of the standards that we're scanning against, tap on it, it'll reload your dashboard. So what we've done is the sections now for the framework has been broken out. So when we show you the controls, we're actually showing them on which section they're affecting. So I think this is helping partners again in a big way understand what are the problem groups? Like what are the groupings and how do we attack them from a compliance, from a strategy, from a, we need to fix all this. This really helps us understand if it's policies, is it the templates, is it the user permissions? Is it, you know, system services? Are these things that we can configure with our tools? Most of the time the answer is yes, but I really love how we brought in the sections from the frameworks right to you and we've also given you in the details over here, the actual subsection that it pertains to. So again, this data starts to become really useful when you're looking through these different frameworks and you're, and you're coming up with your cyber and your compliance strategy. This can help you guys stay organized, but also you know build the solution the way that the problem surfaces itself, which is this way. So. And then I want to talk about the 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 breakout here of compliant, non-compliant, manual, and non-compliant. So anything that falls under compliant and non-compliant, these counts, these are going to be the things that we can fix through the tool, through automation, through a script, meaning so if a setting isn't in place, we could use a script from the tool to go ahead and adjust that and fix that issue, right? Bring it to compliant. So the idea is, is any of the control that we find here on the non-compliant side are things that can be addressed through automation, through a script. The flip side of that, the manual things, these are gonna be the controls and things that cannot be addressed through a script or through a policy change, right? Like for example, administrative safeguards in HIPAA, we've got these supervision or we've got these SOPs that have to be in place, right? These aren't really, uh, these aren't really configurations on a machine that can be changed, but rather processes, procedures, or evidence of documentation to show that you actually have these things in place. And so with some of these, we're going to be able to give you a spot where you can actually, I'm going to switch to the company view because I want to talk about, this was a good example, is if you have these things in place, right, you can tell us, you can select off these things and say, I'm going to upload the evidence here. And actually you have to pick, you can't just pick all of these, you got to have one. And you can provide the evidence that shows why this is marked as compliant or non-compliant and that you have, you know, you've commented it, you've got the actual evidence where you could upload maybe a Word document or Excel file or a master service agreement or some signed off thing from your customer stating that they're taking responsibility of the vulnerability you disclosed to them. It could be anything. Point is, you've got a spot a digital filing cabinet to say, here's the evidence that supports the data that I've got. So 
I think this is a huge uplift in how we're storing this and maybe even pseudo GRC, right? We're getting into the governance and risk side of things when you have the ability to store that doc documentation against these. So a really nice change there on the compliance side. On the types, again, we've got the frameworks you can scan for, you can tap through those. We've also built a nice list of platforms. So instead of just saying, hey, operating system one, two, three, now we're giving you, I think, more useful things like Azure server. This is a specific thing. This isn't just a regular OS, right? It's an Azure server. Along with all your normal server breakouts, we also support full line of Linux, Ubuntu, SUS, all the Debian and Mac compliances are supported here. So it's not just Windows, but we can actually do all the major operating systems for compliance now. So again, a big uplift in the way this dashboard has been designed. <clears throat> um, I wanna also talk about the compliance. I'm gonna go back to our global view again. We're gonna go back to compliance. And I wanna talk about the check master. So this is the other side of the compliance module. And what this is, is the collection of all of the checks and the scripts that are being ran on the endpoints to determine how we're getting the results and how we're determining are things compliant or not? What are we actually checking? What machines are we checking? So again, shout out to Shiva's team and the dev for you know creating some transparency, quite frankly, right? To show the partners, this is how we're getting the data. These are the scripts we're running. So there's 873 scripts in this library. They are broken up, you know, by platform. As I mentioned, desktops and servers versus Azure versus, you know, a Mac versus Linux, et cetera. Different scripts run different things. But this is a way for you guys to really under take a look under the hood and understand how we're running these checks, what we're running them, what kind of you know, results were returning on them. So this was just about creating some transparency for the partners on, you know, how we're getting the data back and, you know, what scripts are being ran against those in. That's going to be your compliance section. Uh, right. Can we also cover compliance dashboard, Ryan? I think that will quickly uh, finish with the whole compliance section, what they're looking for. Yes, back on our dashboard section. Okay. And then you could pick up any compliance, like a CIS compliance dashboard. Yeah. So when you're up in your overview dashboard, up in that top right where we've got our dashboards, you can see they all start with the word compliance. So they're grouped together very nicely. And you can just pick off, you know, what compliance standard you want to run the dashboard against. It will return that data of what's compliant, what's non-compliant. Again, this is looking globally, so there's a lot of data here, of course. And then, as I mentioned, some of them are going to have different pages. So if you wanted to go compliance section by section, again, breaking out those sections, how well are we doing in those sections? Sometimes we're doing really good, and then sometimes we've got a big giant red bar like this one where everything's bad. But a great way to gauge and understand where, you know, the details of compliance and how do we flush all that red out and get it to green, right? Below that, some of the checks broken up by implementation group one, two, and three. So each CIS group has its own kind of, I won't say they're all unique, but some of the unique things that are different between them, but you can see here the counts. And then of course, the actual company scores broken out kind of in that table view if you wanted to kind of look at everything in one view, how are all of my customers stacking up against CIS controls? If I wanted to look at the whole thing across the board. So a really nice view across compliance through the dashboards. And of course, we've also got the standard reports that we can use to view any of this data that we've talked about on the compliance side. All right. Thank, thank you for that, Ryan. I think uh, we've covered pretty much uh, on the global and the company for assets, vulnerabilities, compliance. I think the next section, what we could cover is Active Directory. Now, Active Directory will, yeah, that will be at the company level. 
So you'll have to go through the company and then look at, you know, local active directory, Azure active directory, uh, AD summary. So all of those options will be available. And Ryan, I'll request you to please uh, take them over to that. Yes. So as Rishali is mentioning, if I'm looking at the portal and I'm in the global view, there's no active directory anywhere. You'll be, you won't find it. You got to be at a company since you need, you know, active directory is per company. Once you go to a company, that new bar will, or that new option will pop up on that bar. And then you tap here and you'll have these different options. So I'll just take you guys through starting at the top. Problems. Again, great job, Shiva's team, on consistency here on how we're displaying problems. We talk about Active Directory problems, right? Instead of just saying, hey, here's all your policies, here's all your settings, and we just dump them into an Excel file, and you guys can try to figure out what that looks like. We've kind of did some thought leadership here around you know, what are some of the best practices for active directory hygiene and management? What are the things that we should be doing and looking at and reporting on and securing? So we brought those problem groups in to help you guys understand and look at those. And again, you, you tap down to the dot, the data, you get the data. We'll break it down on the tiles for you. So similar to how we're displaying solutions, vulnerabilities and problems, all into those groupings, again, just to help weed through some of the noise and some of the alerts that you see on this, okay? So broken out by the groups. Again, that is our Active Directory problems. Next, I'll jump down into the summary. So we've got AD summary. So when you tap AD summary, you're gonna see your company name listed. You're gonna tap on that company name. It's then gonna show you the domain. So in this case, super is my domain. And it's going to give you that exploding view into the op the OUs. So I really like this interactive view. This helps, again, us understand how is Active Directory configured from a structure, right? How many OUs do they have and how, what groups belong to them? So as I get down into these OUs, I can then click down into these to see these users, right? So if I I'm looking here and I say, okay, I want to see who's in my test group. You can just click on the word test. It'll take you down into that OU. I have to figure out which one of these, we, there we go, power. So once we get down in here, you get your user details. Again, a bunch of test data here, but normally you'd have a bunch of, you know, your AD stats filled in for your users. We'll pull in your computers. So again, group of computers connected to that OU. Any of the security groups that are tied to that, and of course, uh, of course, the group policy objects that are tied to that particular OU. So again, a really nice interactive view of how is Active Directory configured and how do I, you know, how do I look at it as I go down to the user group? So a little bit different than what we're used to seeing, but more in line with what we're used to managing. So that's going to be the AD summary. Azure AD summary is the same idea. It gives you that exploding view. I don't, this, uh, do we have an Azure AD virtually that you know I could point to in the list here? Um, it's uh, LW underscore AD. That would make sense. So LW. All right, yeah, there it is. So company. we'll switch to these guys. Uh, yeah, you could go to uh, Azure directory, uh, Active Directory, actual summary. Yep. So again, Tap the company, the domain in this case for Azure, this is the .com. Then I get the OU. Inside the OU, I'm going to do the same data. Users, computers, groups. With Azure, you'll get licensing information too, right? So what licenses are enabled out there? What SKU are they? How many are being consumed, et cetera? You get your Azure logs and you get your Azure roles along with the user accounts of who are in those roles. I find incredibly useful as well. That's going to be your Azure AD summary. If you come down into just not the summary, just Azure AD here, this will be more of the dashboard view that we're used to seeing in the current product. But we're going to give you the dashboard up heads up display 
There's your user accounts, your computers, your groups, your licensing. So basically that same info that we can explode to in the summary, this is just kind of broken out into a more of a dashboard view for you. Down below, you'll see you've got your same list, your users, your computers, your groups, license info, logs, and roles. All queried from Azure as soon as you call these tiles. Top right corner, how you sync this. Remember that right bar has got actions on it. So that's where you're going to tell, hey, I want to sync this because I just added some new stuff and I want to see it show up here. Run the sync. I'm going to switch back to my demo company and then go to Active Directory. So this is the Active Directory view instead of Azure, just regular LED. Same concept. Dashboard heads up minus the license information since this one's just the on-prem version. So that's going to be your Azure AD. And then I'm going to switch one more time on us back to this AD company. And we're going to go to the Microsoft Secure Score. So again, Microsoft Azure AD must be connected to have Microsoft Secure Score data, but this will pull in the tenant scoring comparative scoring, just like we're used to seeing along with what services are enabled. You've got the comparative scoring against all tenants and then the total seats comparative scoring. And then below the full details of all of the different checks that Microsoft's doing to determine what your secure score is. So this is just directly pulled from Microsoft APIs. We are not scoring this. We are not you know, grading this, it's just what do we see from Microsoft Secure Score? And we display it for you on the dashboard. And again, if you wanted to sync this, all right, sync now button on the toolbar to run a sync now and update this data. You can see the last sync time on that in your top left corner. Okay. Perfect. So that's going to be your Active Directory options. Again, not available globally, only at the company level. All right. Thank you, Ryan. I think uh, next section we can move on to is reports. So reports, we will uh, cover standard reports and the report builder, both the modules. So uh, basically the reports will have report builder at the global level and standard reports at the company level. So we could drill down and we could uh, check few of this. Thank you. Yes. So we're going to work on this reports bar now. Again, we've got the report builder and we've got standard reports. It's like we're always used to seeing in the current product. Um, I'm gonna go to the standard reports first because I think this is an easy topic since we're all used to seeing these reports already today. So again, in the system, we've got them just displayed a little bit differently. They're in these little pods now, broken up by category, alphabetized. So Active Directory reports and the formats Again, everything you're used to seeing in the standard report section is here. You basically just come in, you tap on the icon, it downloads it. So if you want that one, maybe you want that one. Give that you know icon a click, it'll cue that report up. Up on the top, you've got your standard report jobs that'll show you what's printing. And as soon as those are done, that top one was done, you can literally come in here, select it, and then there, you got your download report here. So again, action bar on the far right. Download, regenerate the report, stop the job or terminate it, get the details of that job, and of course, report settings. Report settings will include your branding options. So when you're in the report settings section, you can tell us what the watermark should be, if you want one, header text, how is it aligned left, right, center, Footer text, if you want it, footer alignment, again, left, right, center. You've got your header image and footer image. If you're used to our standard reports today, that's like the little pastel colored mountains that we display. I always call them the mountains. You can swap those out. Of course, your company logos. And then something that we newly added was cover page uh, additions. So when you're printing your reports, we'll be able to select from, you know, a repository of cover pages. So if you've got different formats, different styles based on 
hey, when I do a prospect, I want to do like this assessment report. But when I do a customer, it's kind of more personal. It's, you know, it's a customer. Maybe we're going to display a different type of report. You could use different cover pages for different scenarios, depending on like how you guys want to do that. Those are going to be your report settings section from standard reports. Okay. Again, you pick the job, you print, you go. The report builder is the actual um, six section where we can actually build a custom report out. Now, right now I'm at the company level. So there's no option here to add anything. You can only run a report. So what you're seeing in this view, this is the name of the report templates. And from here, I would just say, go ahead and generate a report using that template. Now, I'm gonna go up to the global view for a moment. And now you'll notice there's an add button here. The only spot you can add a report template is globally. So if you add a report template, this will be similar to our report builder in the current product. You'll have on the left-hand side, all of the data the report blocks that contain the data. So again, you can search these. Since I don't want to scroll through this list of you know hundreds of choices here because I don't really want to read all that, I know that I'm looking for vulnerability data. So maybe I'm going to go type the word vulnerability and say, okay, what do I got here? Okay, external scan, that looks important. You can just bring that and drag it to the center here and set it on the screen. I can see it's going to be a, you know, a chart like that. Next, I say top five vulnerabilities. Okay, I want that too. Drop that on the screen. And I want to see critical vulnerability details. Drop that in the screen. And maybe I want to see um, some software. I don't know. Pick what you want. You tap save. Give this thing a name. We'll call this Ryan's Fancy Report from Jan 26. Pick a cover page that you want you know, that port report to print. I'll just use the old school building that we've all seen, I'm sure. We'll save that template. So it saves it up at the global level, and then I can use it on any customer. So if I wanna come down to, you know, my demo company, I can see there's my fancy report. I'm gonna come out to the right. I can generate report. That'll print the report from that template same concept, it goes up to that generated reports tab, shows here when it was printed, what type it was, what template it used, and when it's ready for download, select it off, and you download it from here. It'll ask you to save that report. So I'll just drop that on my desktop. There's my report. And then it'll drop the pages in based on what I, you know, what I chose. So external scans, some top five stuff, and vulnerability details. Of course, branding, customization, all that stuff is possible. We can edit, as always, before anything we see. That was just a quick crash course for you guys so you can see the concept of it. But that is a report builder. Much easier to use. All right. Uh, looks like, Ryan, we pretty much covered uh, everything on V4. Right. Uh, would you please allow me to share a screen for a moment? I would just like to take them through a replication process. Yes. All yours. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So I think the uh, replication status, everybody is uh, waiting for these couple of features which are already released. So in V3, you have an option to enable or disable your V4 agent, right? Right in your uh, global view, if you go to the agent section, here you could select the agent which you would like to enable or disable. Oh. And if that is the online agent, it will send a command to enable or disable accordingly. So this will stop the V4 service at the agent side. And you could do that right from your V3 console. Okay. So this is typically uh, where we have seen, I know I, that's already been fixed. The CPU uh, over usage and the memory leakage issue has already been resolved. But uh, even still, this ability has been given as partners were asking for it. The next one we have here uh, is, you know, replication resync, right? I think the automation of the replication has uh, already been done. 
now when partners want to do the replication at their own pace right or they have any additional data for that particular agent any additional configuration any additional details for that company so if you would like to initiate a resync you could use a replication resync this is already live you should see that in your v3 right in your v3 console on the global top menu you should be able to see a replication resync option so the, you should be able to uh, initiate so this is at the company level or if you do at the global level, you, it will ask you whether you want to re, uh, replicate uh, resync. You want to initiate replication resync at for all companies. So that way you could do it for all companies right from your V3 console. And the next one is actually do the replication at the uh, agent, right? So if you would like to do a replication for multiple agents altogether, so you could initiate that from your um, global section. So in the global section, again, same, you'll have to do the selection of the agents and there you get an option to start replication. So any additional um, configuration you have or you're doing it for the first time, that replication will be taken place uh, from here. And I think uh, one more thing we have added here uh, is thank you for this, Dennis. Uh, Dennis had asked that in the replication, initially only the online agents were getting replicated to V4. Right, but uh, now with the start replication option, all your selected agents uh, will be taken into consideration, and this will include your online and offline agents. So online definitely will happen immediately. Offline agents, um, it will start when the agent comes online, right? So you don't have to do it separately again for those agents. So if you select and initiate that, it will wait for that agent to come online, and it will do the replication for it. Thank you, Dennis, for this. That's the, this has already been repli uh, implemented. And uh, we had one more ask from David uh, from Integris IT on the last call to include a title or the CV description in the vulnerability report. So David, that has been live. Uh, this is the vulnerability report, uh, doc report, which I have put up here. So if you see, there's a title column has been added and here you will get the uh, description of a particular CV. Right? So this is uh, already been there, David. Thank you so much for that. So that's it um, on the presentation and the demo side. I think we will take up the questions now. Uh, Andy, yes, the call is getting recorded. We will post the recording uh, after the call. I have a quick question. Yes, Nick, go ahead. So after we migrate to V4, Mm -hmm. Can are we safe to remove the V3 agent or will that happen automatically? Right now, it will not happen automatically. Uh, if you are uh, all set up with V4, uh, then it is suggested to remove V3 because V4 yet a couple of more uh, capabilities to be added. I think more likely like a patching is still pending, right? So if you could wait for uh, that final touch for V4 and then you can take a call of, uh, you know, uh, getting a V3 out of your system. Right. At the moment, there is no automation for V3 removal, but then I will uh, let you know uh, what the engineering team has to say on that. Does that help, Nick? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So I uh, have a question. Yes, please. Go ahead. So we host an on-premise version, and we're currently running version two. Mm -hmm. Someone we can reach out to to contact to discuss that upgrade path, because I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as the SaaS version. Uh, it will be, Julie, I think, but I will request you to please uh, give us some more time, because as I said, V4 still uh, needs little stability. I mean, it is much more uh, uh, stable product now. If you look at, I think today we did a complete demo, which is a live mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. So, but I will still request you to, you know, hold on for a week more, and then we should come out with a script for uh, on-premise versions as well. And we oh, no, I was asking that. not for a script, but is there someone I can contact to discuss? We have a series of questions because I'm going to have to notify our clients in advance. Okay. Uh, could so you have a, yes. Could you, best, that? Yeah. could you raise a ticket for that? Could you raise a ticket for that? That's the best thing. Then I can connect you to the uh, development team and you, we could take it ahead from there. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, Rashti. Uh, yeah, I want to know about the API in the new version. Mm -hmm. I saw some new uh, using the zip uh, 
what is zetail.com using zetail they're getting the authentication and the new mm -hmm. api change so i want to guidance on that how to uh, get the data through the new api and what are the endpoints where mm -hmm. you can see those endpoints okay so rashdi for that uh, at the moment in the portal as you see the api is uh, not been displayed but it is very much there will you please mm -hmm. write to support at connectsecure.com and the team will guide you with that okay okay yeah okay. It, they are available apis are available but probably the team has to take it over with you okay 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 thank you so I have a quick question. Um, how long should we expect this upgrade process to take over? And I'm assuming it would be the same URL, right? So when we log in back after we initiate the sync and the V version enable, before enable, you should off. see V4, right? Yes, you should see. So Nash, you should be having your V4 login active right now. And once you do the uh, replication from V3 to V4, uh, you should be able to see data in V4 also. So it's going to be parallel. Your V3 production uh, remains as it is. That production instance remains as it is. Plus, additionally, you will have a V4 uh, instance separately. So both of them are maintained. Oh, is it to be on the same URL login or to be a different no. URL? So V3 is portal.mycybercns.com and V4 is portal.myconnectsecure.com. Okay. Thank you. Quick question for our own side. Uh, we had originally signed up for the beta V4, mm -hmm. and I believe our agents are still on the new beta site. Okay. Uh, would that be a correct assumption, or should they be on the current V4 production? Uh, so, Enric, uh, V4 is separate and beta is separate. So, uh, in case if you would like your beta uh, agents to be taken to your V4 environment, uh, then, uh, Swami, is that uh, something which is feasible? Yeah. We can, we can do that. Remember. Yep. So, Enric, I'll request you with your V4 tenant details. Could you please uh, send us an email to support? And uh, I guess help you with that. We, the only thing I have to remember is the beta login mm -hmm. site. Uh, we could keep them on beta to keep on testing. Uh, it's just, I, I was curious if, I'm guessing that's the reason I don't see them in the current V4. Got it, it will not be, it's separate. Correct, okay. Okay. And I know many times you've said about this, but what's the off button mean at the beginning of the asset? Sorry, can you come back again? On the begin when you have the list of assets where you're mm -hmm. showing the uh, off the very the first status. icon, the status correct and off line. Yep. So I believe that Shiva's team is working on a release patch to address address that. Um, as of right now, I know that that it's been intermittently working for some partners and not all, including myself. So I would just say maybe hold tight for one more week on that. And perhaps Shiva will give us an update when he returns next week. For now, I would just ignore that status that it's it. I I'm on a machine where it's online and it's status is off. So I would ignore it for now because uh, uh, it, it's just not, it's just not quite there. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Thank so you. Thank you so we we have moved from version three to version four mm -hmm. and so what everybody is saying is that it's okay to go ahead and just use version four and i can ignore version three at this point is that correct uh so okay, what i will suggest is uh v3 is your production i think and many of your business needs for the reporting so currently if you see the demo it includes almost everything uh, right, I think one section which I personally feel is missing is patching, and which is really coming soon. Right, so uh, once that is out, then you can decide. So uh, if you know that your reports which you are looking for and which you were used to get for all your customers are in place, uh, then you can think of you know completely getting out of V3 and using V4. Do we know Thank when you. patching is going to be available? Um, we were told last week that we would see it this week. 
Uh, yes, Sean, it was due this week, uh, but we are delayed on that. So probably it should be coming soon. Swami, any uh, approximate ETA we have for patching? Uh, I think uh, in next week call or uh, the week later, we can demonstrate it on this call. Okay. Thank you for that. Hi. So, our uh, agents be automatically migrating in the near future? So automatic migration of agents is what you're looking for? ARM agents, ARM agents. ARM agents. Um, Swami, is that something that we'll be able to? Yeah, the same uh, like Linux agents, ARM agents also can be migrated from there. Okay. okay. We just haven't seen ours work yet, so I guess we'll just... So the start maybe... replication option, which I just showcased on the PowerPoint, yes. that should help you with that. Yes, we'll give it a shot. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I was trying to uh, replicate or resync uh, at company level and uh, uh, a prompt is coming like, you know, are you mm -hmm. sure you want to replicate or resync all, all the companies to V4? So I'm doing it in the company level, but it's uh, asking, like it is, it is showing all the companies to V4. So that's why I'm concerned, like. Okay, I so, think, yes, Swami. Uh, yeah, so if you are clicking on the top menu, that will do the company the whole company into v v4 so if you are uh, planning to move only the company level you can go to the uh, start company replication. level yeah start replication yeah but i'm in the company level and the prompt says are you sure you want to replicate or raising all the companies to v4 so my bad swami so uh, that button will always do all companies replication sorry bijesh for that okay so if i press yes it will do all replication all companies all right. the, so if all you want companies. to do yeah company wise then you have to go to the company mm -hmm. and the agents and then select start replication oh, okay okay so the you know the pending uh, resync will be done correct you know agent wise yeah got it thanks thank you For Shali, maybe that's something that we could put on the screen to show the partners that are still here what we're referring to on the on the on the replication. Go ahead, Ryan. You you could show us that into the V three portal. Yeah, I'll I'll have to log into it. It'll just take me a second here, but just so everyone's clear on what we're actually saying here. You want to make me the host again, Vishali? I absolutely right. One minute. Yep, done that. Okay, so I'm going to reshare my screen here with everybody and bring this over. Bear with me just a second. Okay, so V3 portal, when we're logged in up top, there's a button up here replication resync. If you tap this, this is going to start the replication of all companies to back to V4. No matter if you're in the company level, because right now I'm at I'm in this company, right? But that does all companies. Okay, so that replication button. The other options you have is to go up to the probes and agents menu and look at your company level or globally, you can do this. And you're going to have replication options at the agent menu right here. That's to do it on an individual. If you didn't want to do all the companies or you didn't want to do all of the agents, you can pick one or two or a group of them, however you choose, and you can replicate them to just maybe make sure things are coming over as you expect. So I could you know, come into the company or I can come up to global probes agents and I could maybe just sort everything that's online and say hey I'm going to grab these four because I know they're online right now I'm going to go here and I'm going to replicate those and then what's nice is you can see what's been replicated so maybe these top two I don't need to do those because those are already been replicated I got green check marks up there so you can use this as a way to move your agents at your own pace no one's being forced to do it. It's not automatically happening anymore unless you come in and press the launch button. So 
hopefully that will help clear up some of it for some of you. But again, if you're not seeing those options or you're having issues with it, send an email to our support team. We will help you guys. We're here. We're listening. Our staff is ready to help you guys. So, you know, let us know the details and we'll get you sorted out. All right. Thank you for that, Ryan. I think a couple of other questions somebody has asked about the Excel reports. Uh, so Excel reports will be added soon. As you see, the doc reports have been added. PPT is almost there. Um, then the next will be Excel. So we should be adding them soon. Any other question? Okay, Sean has a list of still missing a lot of features, okay? Yeah, sorry. I, um, just a, the main point on that for us that I'm really struggling with is the event sets are majorly different mm -hmm. in the ConnectWise integration. Mm -hmm. So I was able to filter out by EPSS score. I was able to filter out by asset and products. And um, now I just get, you know, a dump of either asset or a company level of every vulnerability on that machine and mm -hmm. it's impossible for the our ticketing system to filter through is there any plan to try and bring that back in line at all um understood so those filters is something what you are uh, currently missing in this uh, i've noted down this uh, what we will do is after the call um let me get back to you on this if you could dm me your email or the tenant name uh, i can get the communication going yeah. with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And so on, thanks. All right, any more questions? Uh, Dennis, yes, MSI should be added soon on this. And Andy, no, V3 and V4 agents are completely separate. They will not be, they, they don't work together. So V3 has its own install. V4 has its own install. If you want to install a V3 agent into the portal, you can replicate it to V4, but they are two separate installs, two separate services, two separate portals. They are completely not together. Uh, Chris, yes, if an agent's offline, it will replicate when it returns back to online. So, yes, I saw Vashiva grab that. It's actually Vershali, I think, yeah, Shiva. No problem. Uh, Craig, we will get the recording available ASAP. Uh, we'll, we will upload that to the YouTube channel where it will be posted. So, soon as soon as possible, that will get uploaded. Uh, so I think uh, Julie has a question on how do you clean up agents after upgrade? So is that specific to V3 agents you're talking about, Julie, the existing product agents? Yeah, because you said they run side by side in parallel. Correct. Isn't that what you said? So what do you do when you want to make a full switch over? Right. So uh, I assume, I think, Swami, if you are there in the call, is that something we are going to take up uh, to help partners on this cleaning V3 agents? The same like uh, resync, we will keep the clean up button. So click on a button and it'll automatically clean it up. Oh, great. Wait, I'm sorry. So there's going to be a button. Yes. So once uh, I think V4 is completely stabilized, we will give you an ability uh, in the V3 uh, or in the V4 to clean up the V3 agents. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And just to confirm, there is already today and a mass action in the agent menu to uninstall or delete an agent from V3. So you could issue an uninstall command right out of the V3 portal to all the agents that are online. Okay, but when they're running in parallel for, I'm guessing maybe there's going to be a point in time when the agents are running in parallel. And then at some point you're going to decide or, you know, we'll decide. Yeah. Okay the cutover, then there's going to be an uninstall specifically targeted for the V3 version. Sounds like there will be. Yeah, no, that's, right. that's exactly right. Okay. Because okay. if you uninstall them completely and there's no agent on them, then they're just going to be unmanaged. Uh, 
James, for that download link, uh, dynamic link, would you please write to support? They can give you that immediately. It's there. Yeah, James, if you want to send that request in, we'll get you the, the script installation because if you just grab the installer from the company, it is uh, got a time to live. It'll expire after so many uh, minutes or hours. I'm not sure what the count is, but it definitely won't work with the script. Okay, I think we're all caught up, Ryan. Any more questions? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, someone had asked about assessments. Will assessments be available in the V4 portal soon? Or any uh, plans for that? Uh, Swami, uh, will you be able to help with that? Assessments module, will that be available in V4? Yes. We'll be adding that soon. Thank you. Yes. Okay, adding that soon. And Andy, yeah, I would say for now, since V3 is production, I would just install new agents to V3. And then when you're ready, you can replicate them to V4. And then it eventually we'll sunset and uninstall the V3 stuff. So if it was me, I would start with V3. Since that is production, we're still kind of coming out of the last stages of beta for V4. So that's what I would do. Perfect. Yeah. Anyone else that needs additional help, you know, of course, you know, let our let our support team know we're here, we're listening, we want to help you guys. Um, so send in send an email support at connectsecure.com and appreciate everyone staying for the long session today, two hours. So a lot of lot of partners here with us. So, you know, this product wouldn't be what it is without everyone's feedback, the good, bad, the ugly. We're here for all of that. So, you know, thank everyone. For, for taking time out of your Fridays to join us and uh, stay tuned because we'll have, we'll have more coming here in the next week. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time this morning, everyone, and have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks.